Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about linear functions and this time we're going to be thinking about tables. In particular we're interested when a table represents a linear function. So here's an example and this is actual data taken from a website uh, at a university. Um, here's the data. Uh, we have blood alcohol content that's represents the amount of alcohol that's in someone's system. And then we have the metabolism time. That is, that's the amount of time it takes, in this case in hours, for all the alcohol to leave the system. So if you have a blood alcohol content of 0.02, then it'll take one and one-third hours to leave your system. If you have a blood alcohol content level of 0.10, then it'll take six and two-thirds hours. So this is actual data. And we'd like to check to see if this is a linear function. So how do we check whether it's a linear function? Well, linear functions are functions whose average rate of change is constant. That is, for no matter what B and A we choose, we're always going to get the same number M. So to check whether this is a linear function, we just have to check that the average rate of change formula holds. No matter what we put in, we get the same number. So let's check some average rates of change. Let's first choose, say, A to be 0.02 and B to be 0.05. In that case, f of a is 1 and a third, b is 3 and a third. So I get f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, I'll get 3 and a third minus 1 and a third, which is just 2. And then b minus a is 0.05 minus 0.02, which is 0.03. Okay, how can I simplify that? Well, I can think of 0.03 as 3 one hundredths then I can invert and multiply and get 200 divided by 3. Okay, in other words, this is 66.6 .6 repeating. So that's an example of an average rate of change computation. That's what the choice of a equals 0.02 and b equals 0.05. Of course, to know that the function's linear, I have to know that no matter what I choose for A and B, I always get this number 66.6 .6 repeating. By the way, since we're here at uh, thinking about repeating, I want to point out about web work. Web work doesn't understand repeating decimals. It does understand approximations, and depending on the problem, you'll have to f use uh, more of the decimal expansion or less. So you might try using 66.6666 okay, as, as into web work and if that doesn't work and you still think you have the right answer you throw in another six and you keep throwing in sixes until web work says uncle you're right uh, but depends on the web work problem how many decimal places you really have to work with so it doesn't recognize this bar but it will eventually uh, give you a correct answer Okay, so back to our problem, we want to figure out whether for other choices of A and B, we still get 66.6 uh, uh, six with repeating, and we need to check other uh, values of A and B. So we choose A now to be 0.05 and B equal to 0.08. Okay, so in that case, well, the f of b minus f of a is the change in the values of the metabolism time, so it's 5 and 1 third minus 3 and 1 third, which is again 2, so the change in the y values is still 2, and the change in the x values, 0 0.08 minus 0 0.05 is still 0 0.03, so we get the same thing, right? We get 66.6 .6 bar. So nothing changes if we choose uh, a to b 0.05 and b to b 0.08. Okay, let's move on. Let's now choose a to b 0.08 and b to b 0.10. Well, here things are a little bit different. 
uh, let's check. So here in this case, the change in the y values, f of b minus f of a, is going to be the difference between 6 and 2 thirds and 5 and 1 third. That's no longer 2. It's now 1 and a third, right? 5 and 1 third and 6 and 2 thirds. So that's a change in the y values. The change in the x values is 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.08. So that looks a little bit different, but let's see if it's the same. It's not that the y difference in the y values has to be the same as the y values for the other problem, but we just want to check that the ratio is the same. Okay, so let's work on this. 1 and a third is the same as 4 thirds. 0 0.02 is the same as 2 one hundredths. If we invert and multiply, we get 2, one, oh, sorry, 100 over 2. If we invert, 100 over 2 times 4 thirds. And that's the same as 4 hundredths over 6, which is the same as 200 over 3 by simplifying numerator and denominator, which is the same as what we have before. So even though the numbers are somewhat different, the ratio looks different, it actually turns out to be the same thing. We still get 66.6 .6 bar. Okay, and so uh, at this point you can actually be confident that you have a linear function because the average rates of change are always the same. They're always this number, 66.6 .6 repeating, or in other words, 200 thirds. Right? You might ask, what if we choose a to be 0 0.02 and B to be 0 0.10, do I get the same answer? And the answer is yes. It turns out, and so you can assume this fact, that if you check successive A's and B's, so I check this pair of A and B's, and that pair of A and B's, and that pair of A and B's, and if I have another pair, I have to check the next pair. If I check successive pairs, then it'll still work when I choose kind of distant A and B's. It'll still give me the same average rate of change. And if that average rate of change is always the same, then we have a linear function. So this, in, in this case, we have a linear function. Okay, so this was a video that tried to explain how to check whether a linear uh, function represented by a table is indeed a linear function.